This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, March the 15th, 2019. Beware the Ides of March. What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set him before me, let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng, look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March. That's Act 1, Scene 2 of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. It's the Ides of March, a notoriously unlucky day in many ancient cultures. For the Romans, it was tax day and the official last day to settle debts. The Romans didn't number days from the first of the month to the last. Rather, they had three fixed points, which were easily measured by the sun and the moon, and they measured their days backwards and forwards from those. The knowns were around the 6th, depending on the month. The ides was around the 14th, again, depending on the month. And the calends was the start of the following month. For the Romans, the ides was particularly sacred to Jupiter. And so it was a day of special importance to leaders, especially religious leaders. Julius Caesar was, after all, Pontifex Maximus, the chief priest of Jupiter. The day should have been lucky for him but it was to be the day of his assassination. In 44 BC, Julius Caesar, dictator of the Roman Republic, was stabbed to death by Marcus Junius Brutus, Gaius Cassius Longinus, Decimus Junius Brutus, and several other Roman senators, leaving it in infamy for the rest of Roman history. Shakespeare's retelling of the story is one of my personal favorites. It's the feast day of St. Louise de Marillac, Born August 1591 in France, out of wedlock. Her father claimed her as his daughter, but not as his heir. And despite her family's prominence in France and their place at court, Louise was never able to enter society. Her father died when she was 12, and she went to live with a spinster aunt. When she was about 15, she applied to join the Capuchin sisters, but she was denied outright. Instead, she married and had one child, Michael de Graaf. During one of the many periods of civil unrest in the 17th century Paris, she made contact with a bishop who would be her spiritual director, one Francis de Sales. At the time, Paris had an excess of very wealthy, very religious women whose husbands were entirely distracted with the politics of the day. These women flocked to priests and sought spiritual direction. And when Francis de Sales moved on from Paris, Louise was directed to an enthusiastic young priest named Vincent de Paul. She was attracted to his charitable works in particular, and eventually, after her husband's death, she founded, with his direction, a religious order called the Daughters of Charity. She died in 1660 and was canonized by Pope Pius IX in 1934. Finally today, in A.D. 270, in modern-day Demre, Turkey, Nicholas of Myra, or if you prefer, Nicholas of Bari, was born to wealthy Christian parents. He went on to become a priest and later a bishop. Early on, he was famous for helping ordinary people. He helped get prostitutes off the street. He raised monies for dowry. He fed the poor and the sick by putting coins in their socks and their shoes, which were typically left out on the doorstep giving rise to our tradition of Christmas stockings. As a bishop, he was famous for punching the heretic Arius right in the face at the Council of Nicaea. Later in life, he was famous for miracles and was known as Niccolo Thaumaturgos, wonder worker. He died on the 6th of December, A.D. 342, and is the patron of sailors, merchants, authors, repentant thieves, children, brewers, pawnbrokers, and students. He's also Santa Claus, but more on that in December. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.